At Sourcefy, we help hundreds of companies uh, manufacture products around the world. And we see Chinese factories actually transitioning outside of China to the Philippines and Vietnam. And there's an increased demand for American companies now to produce products outside of China in Vietnam, Thailand, uh, the Philippines, all across Asia. And these, tr these trade tariffs are really having a big effect on this. So it is the, the result of the, the threat of tariffs and some of the tariffs that have already been imposed that you're seeing this happening now. Is that the idea? It, it was. I mean, I was on a flight last week from the Philippines, from Manila to our office in Guangzhou, and I was sitting next to a Chinese factory owner, and he's already opened up another factory in the Philippines to really help uh, diversify his supply chain for his customers. But Nathan, hasn't this been going on for some time in general that even large companies, so perhaps larger than the ones that you work with, have been trying to diversify their supply chain so that they're not all in on China, that they've been trying to move to Vietnam and Bangladesh, um, as some examples, Indonesia as well. I mean, this is not just the result of the trade and the tariffs. This has been happening for a while. Definitely it has been. And the larger enterprises are well aware and really understand how to diversify their supply chain. But for the e-commerce companies that are fueled through, you know, Shopify or Amazon, you know, a lot of times they're still based in China and now having to diversify their supply chain outside of China. But the problem is all these larger enterprises have taken up the capacity at all the good factories across Vietnam, the Philippines, and Thailand. And so you see a lot of companies really scrambling because for an e-commerce company or even a fast-growing startup, they aren't able to pay you know, 25% more on their imported products. So two things here, one more granular and the other more sort of 50,000 feet. First, the granular one. I'm surprised that the Chinese government will let Chinese manufacturers move their capital offshore. In other words, go open uh, factories at the expense of Chinese factories, go open factories in the Philippines, Indonesia, and so forth. Yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing. You know, the labor rates right now in the Philippines, for example, are about a third of what it costs in China and a lot of these major cities. And so factories have continued to move outside of China, and the tariffs are just kind of spiking this trend. But at the end of the day, the raw material, you know, the raw material that you need to produce all sorts of clothes or, or fashion items, you know, really still come from China. So these mm -hmm. factories now are having to import their raw material from the China fabric mills to their cut and sew facilities in Vietnam or the mm -hmm. Philippines or Thailand. And the big 50,000 foot question is, I'd like to get your opinion on this. How much of the trade dispute, the tariffs, do you think are directed specifically at addressing unfair trading practices? And how much of it do you think is directed at really disintermediating, to use a, a 75 cent word, disintermediating China from the global supply chain and thereby weakening China's economy? I, I think it kind of leads towards the weakening of Chinese economy. I mean, if you look at what they've been doing with their currency right now, for example, their currency, the UN, is at a 13-month low. And so the Chinese you know, government is really kind of trying to push back on these tariffs by saying, look, we can kind of control our currency a bit and make it still an affordable way to buy and produce products in China. And that is actually now putting pressure on Vietnam and these other you know, Southeast Asian countries to say, look, you know, if we have to compete with a lower Chinese currency, at the end of the day, you know, it really uh, causes a lot of problems for companies that are producing products throughout Asia. I've got to go here, Nathan, but a very, very quick question here. I mean, we're, we're talking about a one-way street going overseas for manufacturing. Are you seeing, you know, the president wants to see more manufacturing here in the U.S. Are you seeing any companies that are deciding to do it here in the U.S.? You know, it depends on the products, but for the large amount of items that are sold, you know, through e-commerce platforms, at the end of the day, the labor rates here in America are just too high. And so they're actually diversifying outside of China to other Southeast Asian countries rather than bringing production back to America.